This plot here shows the composition of the bulk silicate earth and it tries to explain a number of characteristics we observe when looking at the composition of the bulk silicate earth. Now first with silicate earth we mean essentially the composition of the entire earth minus the metallic core. In this plot here on the x-axis is the, the decrease in the 50% condensation temperature which means this is the temperature at which 50% of an element from a gas is condensed. It, this refers basically to the era before the Earth formed in the protoplanetary disk when at some point maybe all the material was completely evaporated and then started to condense. On the y-axis um, is the abundance of the elements normalized to CI chondrites and magnesium as a mass ratio. Further, the geochemical characteristics of the elements are color coded here. So there are the, the lithophile elements, the siderophile elements, chalcophile and atmophile elements. And finally, this the, uh, uh, plot is discriminated here into the refractory main volatile and highly volatile elements. So this is the cosmochemical characteristic and of course this is directly related to the 50% condensation temperature here. Then we first look at the refractory lithophile elements. So um, these are these elements here. And these have more or less identical abundances, abundances as in the CI chondrites. Then starting about with the main elements, um, the lithophile elements are about monotonic, monotonically depleted in the earth. So there's a certain trend downwards here, as we can see. Then when we look at the siderophile elements, we can see and Again, start with the refractory elements, we can see that these are mostly largely depleted. And this is clear. I mean, the citrophile elements, we would expect all of them to be in Earth's core. And in fact, in particular, the highly citrophile elements, um, which are plotted in this field here, these highly citrophile elements, they should be at zero. So really, all the way down here. But they are not. They are slightly enriched. So these highly citrophile elements are actually here although we would expect them much further down. And the reason for this is, is often assumed that Earth already differentiated into a mantle and a core, so all the siderophile elements were in the core, so these high siderophile elements were all at zero, basically. And then, at a, at, at a time, a couple of millions of years after differentiation, a large meteorite or asteroid impacted into Earth and dissolved into the mantle. And this asteroid was primitive in composition, so it had a lot of still metal inside. This metal dissolved in the mantle and added this metal to the mantle and it remained there because differentiation was already, already ceased. And this metal that came from this late impact or late veneer as it is called, um, produced this elevation in the highly siderophile elements here. So this is one of the characteristics of Earth that is um, trying to well, interpret it here or explain with this, this diagram. Then there are a couple of other elements like maybe tungsten, molybdenum or so. Um, they are a little bit higher and this is usually attributed, so they are siderophile elements not entirely in the core and this is usually m most likely due to um, the partition behavior of these particular elements, which are related to oxygen fugacity, the valence of these elements, pressure, temperature in the Earth, and so on. These need to be studied in detail by, for example, experiments. So if you then go back to this, um, to this trend here, this downward trend here, this is called the volatile element depletion trend. And this is more or less monotonic. And it's not only monotonic, this trend is, the general trend is, independent of the geochemical 
um, characteristic of the element. So independent of whether this element is lithophile or siderophile or chalcophile, there is this monotonic depletion trend. Yeah, for example, here the uh, copper or gallium, which are chalcophile, are on this trend as well, or um, something like tin is here on this trend as well, and so on. Although there are slight deviations here, but there's a general monotonic depletion trend. And because this is independent of the geochemical characteristic, it is typically assumed that the material from which Earth accreted was initially already depleted in these volatile elements. And this is why it's independent of whether this is um, lithophile or siderophile. Which means, which can then be interpreted as that the material from which Earth accreted formed in a region that was depleted in volatile elements. And the reason for this can be that the um, temperatures in these regions were still rather hot, so that a lot of volatile elements did not condense. And they're still in the gas phase. So this is one of the interpretations here. Now then again, there are quite a number of either individual elements or groups of elements that deviate from this monotonic depletion trend. For example, indium is a little bit high. Um, of course, um, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium are quite low. And all these deviations from the trend, or for example, also lead is a little bit low, which is an important element for dating. And these individual elements and groups of elements then again need some specific explanations. Typically, typically again, this is most likely due to the partition behavior of these elements, um, which might again be related to oxygen fugacity, the valence state of these elements, pressure and temperature, and need to be studied by, for example, experiments to really find out why these elements do not plot on this trend, but deviate from this. And this is um, one of the quite fundamental plots for the Earth and also for cosmochemistry, and this is generally how this is um, read and interpreted.